When we get to the last two centers, there are only four possible patterns, and we will use two general principles to solve all of them logically. Principle one, we slice into a match forming bars. Principle two, we slice back into a match forming bars. Sometimes either principle can be used depending on the case. One may be more efficient than the other. Notice the solved bars in each of these situations. So for principle one, the two solved bars are in opposite slices of each other. But for principle two, the two solved bars are in the same slice. For reference, I'm calling a bar any two centers connected, whether it's these two or these two. Same down here, this is a bar, this is a bar. I'll refer to these sides or positions as slots. The side I turn is the working slot with the other one being the stationary slot. Now that we understand the principles we'll use to solve the last two centers, we'll look at and solve each of the four possible patterns. While there are several different iterations of just four basic patterns or cases, for the purpose of this tutorial, I will consider all iterations as just four cases that I've named and numbered. So I won't consider these different cases when the pattern is the same, but opposite colors. So these two, I will consider the same case as well as these two. Also, each iteration of this case is considered the same. Because the beginner method I teach has us solve the centers in Bogger color order, blue, orange, green, red, with yellow to the right and white to the left, we will always end with green facing us and red on top. You, however, may end with two different colors. Just make sure they are correct relatively with blue opposite green, bleen, red opposite orange, orange. The four possible cases are case one, bars, bars, case two, three, one, three, one, case three, checker, bars, Case four, checker, checker. I don't consider solved centers, but in the wrong location, a case, but some might. Regardless, we'll learn how to fix it. Case one, bars, bars. This is the easiest and most logical to solve as the bars are already solved. We just have to join them together to solve the centers. So following our bogger pattern, blue, orange, green, red, we know that this needs to be red. So we put both red bars in the same slice, slice up, moving this good bar out of the way. Then we move this solved bar over here. And when we slice back, everything's solved. Alternatively, we could slice the green down and accomplish the same thing, but we do have to be mindful of the color placement. So for example, if I slice this green up, now my color pattern's wrong because blue, orange, green, red, not red, green. So no biggie, that's easy to fix. All we're gonna do is put a red up here, then move the other red up there. All right. Alternatively, let me show you one other way to do that without a, a hand change. So I put this red up here. Then I bring this green down and I keep going to swap this green down, move this red over. And when I come back, they're fixed. It's just a little quicker, same number of moves, just a neat little trick. Don't try to memorize or copy anything here though. Just look at it and solve it logically. Here I have three colors forming an L or a V or however you want to think about it. And then just one of the opposite color. Same thing on top, three and one. Again, we have several different iterations of this, but they're all the same pattern and we'll solve them with the same principles. What we want to do is put the uh, solved bars in opposite slices and then slice up into a match and then bring our newly formed bar down. 
if we don't match when we slice up, all we do is have to notice where this green is and then just turn the top so that it will match when we slice up. That same principle holds true for any iteration there is. So for example, if, if I had it like this, I need that green up here to match. So I just do that. So it doesn't matter the different iterations. It's the same pattern and we solve it the same way. If we have the same pattern but opposite colors, we still solve it with the same principle. We just splice into a match, but this time instead of bringing red down, I bring the green down. And then I keep coming down, move this green over, which brings that red up to put the centers in the correct location. Blue, orange, green, red. Alternatively, I could slice down this way if I like. And same thing, just... You have a lot of flexibility on how you choose to solve it. Okay, case three, checker pattern and bars, or what some people consider diagonals and bars. Just focus on one color, whether it's the green or the red. So for the purpose of this example, I'm gonna focus on green. So I have one solved green bar. I just need to connect these two to create a bar, which by default will create a red bar. So in order to do that, I notice the placement of this green in this working slot. Then when I slice up, I just turn the top to make sure that green will match when I slice back. And then once I have the bar solved, I solve my centers. That principle holds true no matter what iteration you use. So for example, if this checker pattern is slightly different, all I want to do is notice this green. So when I slice up, I just need to move this green to match it when I slice back. Let's do that again, but this time focusing on red. So I notice the placement of this red right here. Then when I slice up, I turn the top so that that red will match it. And then as soon as I come back, I have formed bars. And then I solve my centers. So if you have the opposite pattern when bars on top and checker on the front, it doesn't matter. It's still the same principle. What we're gonna do is just focus on one color. I'll choose red for this example. I notice the placement of this red when I slice down, I just turn this to match that red when I slice back. Then I move this red up or the green down, it doesn't matter. And they're all solved, bogger, blue, orange, green, red. Case four, checker pattern, checker pattern. We slice up, forming two bars, bring the green down, which forms the three one case we already learned how to solve. We match up those two bars and solve both centers. Now let's do that exact same sequence, but perform differently. Slice up to match these pairs. Come down, but instead of stopping right here, keep coming down to match those up. Turn the front to position the red to come back up. Whether you realize it or not, that's the exact same movement, relatively speaking. But instead of using my left hand to slice up, I just use my right to keep slicing down. All right, so let's look at that one more time. Slice up to match, come down, but keep coming down to match these. So notice the relative movement. Once I come up and match, once I come here, there's no difference in me turning this hand down or this hand up. The relative movement is exactly the same. They both end up in the same position. So that's a concept by now you should understand, but if you don't, go ahead and play with that a little bit so that you can wrap your head around it. All right, we'll do the whole thing one more time, just a little bit faster. All right, that's a wrap. Uh, just make sure to keep placement in mind and make sure you solve green here and red on top.